Thank you for joining us today. Um, Chet, thank you for joining us for an installment of Community Voices um, with JD Sports and Finish Line. Um, we're excited to have you. We know it's a busy time, obviously, as you get prepared for the big day, but um, thank you again. Um, I'm sure folks do know you, but for those who maybe don't and are just tuning in for the first time, if you just want to give a quick shout out to yourself, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Chet, Chet Holmgren from uh, Minnesota. Uh, I played basketball at Gonzaga last year, and uh, I just declared for the NBA draft this year. And, uh, you know, hopefully in about two weeks, I'll, I'll hear my name pick. Awesome. Thank you, Chet. Um, and I'm Tyler. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into the questions. I don't want don't to waste any time. Um, but just obviously... You know, we there's a lot of pressure on the draft, but always like to chat with people about basketball in general and just the sport and and your experience with it. So one question I think that's been on um, some minds on our team is about pregame rituals and really if there's anything throughout your high school career, college career, and obviously eventually your NBA career that um, you like to do before the game, maybe a song. Um, maybe a pregame meal. Um, what do you do to get yourself pumped up uh, right before a big game? Uh, yeah, I definitely say I don't. I'm not a big uh, uh, person on you know. I don't. I don't sleep in a specific pair of shorts or something the night before, uh, you know. But I'm big on my preparation. So uh, you know, it comes down to watching film. You know, I like to get a workout in the day before the game on the court. Uh, you know, I'm usually listening to music for the most uh, for most of the day. Uh, before a game um, and then you know got to get a big uh, pre-game meal in uh, you know something lots of carbs something that's going to help me help fuel me for the game uh, you know uh, that's that's pretty much my routine nice, nice. love to hear it um, so I want to chat a little bit about your number I know sometimes people choose a number kind of haphazardly um, sometimes there's a lot more meaning behind someone's jersey number but um, tell us if there is anything um, behind the number 34 um, that you've been rocking for for such a time uh yeah uh like i think you said it best it was kind of uh haphazardly uh you know when i when i uh got on to varsity i think my eighth grade year uh way back in middle school so you know i've been rocking 34 for a while but when i when i did join the team uh the last medium jersey was number 34 um and you know look good play good so you know i had to get that medium jersey uh so i've been rocking 34 ever since you know, sometimes it happens that way. Sometimes it's best to get up to the cosmos and yeah. maybe that's like the best way to approach it. Yeah, um, it's worked out well so far, so. Nice, well, love to hear that too. So um, I do wanna chat a little bit about the draft. Um, I, was, I was watching one of your previous interviews, Chet, and one thing that I really um, liked that you called out is that you didn't want to stress too much about the details of the draft and where you might end up. And, and I wanted to get lost in the mess, but really, enjoying what should be an exciting time for your career but I am curious to know if there's anything beyond just hearing your name called that you're looking forward to um, with this process of the draft this year uh it's a lot of things um you know there's been a lot of build up between the end of the season and now and uh when the draft's gonna be uh and it'll be it'll be a relief to hear my name but you know, I've just been trying to stay in the moment and, you know, enjoy the whole process. Uh, you know, I feel like I've been doing that pretty well because uh, it goes quick. Uh, it's going to continue to go fast. So uh, I'm just trying to stay in the moment and, and enjoy all of it. Of course, of course. And then let's talk after the draft. So what are there anything? Is there anything, I guess, about the NBA, um, about your, your journey into the NBA that you're looking forward to um, right as things get started here? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to going out and first and foremost playing basketball uh, and competing, uh, you know, because that's what I've worked so hard to, to be able to do. Uh, you know, that's what I love to do. Uh, you know, I just love to play basketball and, you know, I've been putting the hours in. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to be able to, uh, you know, go and sh show what my work is, you know, being put in for. Yeah, absolutely. And and kind of on that note, I'm curious if you wouldn't mind chatting, you know, what's it like for you really at, at an early stage in your career? You know, you start your college basketball career, you play a season, 
and then the NBA um, really opened its doors to you. Uh, did you anticipate it happening this soon? Were you en envisioning it being this season? And, and what's on your mind, you know, a, a year into your college career, really entering a, a massive new chapter for yourself? Yeah, so uh, I'm, like I said, I'm big on staying in the moment. Uh, so I don't like to look too far ahead. I like to, you know, stay where my feet are at. Uh, but, you know, to achieve great things, you know, I feel like you got to have goals. So, uh, you know, I've definitely set goals to to get to where I am. And, you know, I have goals that, you know, are pretty hard to reach going forward as well that, you know, I'm going to work hard to, to achieve. And, uh, you know, I feel like those goals will be, become apparent, you know, as I'm striving for them. Yeah, absolutely. That's dope. I appreciate it. Um, so I do want to chat a little bit about um, life outside of basketball. Um, obviously, we're all multifaceted human beings, so you do a lot more than play basketball. Um, yeah. And in the last few years, you know, we've really seen you giving back to the community, um, really in a number of different ways. I think it kind of runs the gamut. Um, how did that start for you? And, and what are some of the things that you've done to try to drive a positive impact, um, you know, in your communities? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's a loaded question. That's a lot to answer. A question. Quickly, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I believe in standing up one, standing up for what you believe in. Uh, you know, I believe in a lot of different things for a lot of different reasons. Uh, and, you know, um, you know, I don't know everything, but what I do know, you know, I'm going to stand up for and, uh, you know, I'm going to speak my mind on it. Um, and then also, uh, you know, I'm big on controlling what you can control. Uh, and, you know, for me to get to the point, uh, you know, I'm adding in my life, in my career, uh, you know, I've controlled as much as I can control. But, you know, I also understand there's aspects to it that, you know, I couldn't control that, you know, I've been extremely blessed with. Uh, and I feel like uh, because of that, you know, it's I wouldn't say my duty, but you know, I feel like, uh, you know, I have a great opportunity to give back to other people and help them with what they can't control necessarily. Uh, you know, I feel like opportunity uh, is something that is super important within everybody's journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when preparation uh, meets opportunity, you know, some great things can happen. So just trying to give opportunity back to, you know, community, uh, communities that, you know, I've been a part of and uh, you know, I've embraced me, you know, I'm trying to embrace them as well and, and help out in different ways that I can. Gotcha. That's dope. That's dope. Um, definitely leading um, by example in a very good way. Um, speaking of, you know, communities that you that you're working to impact, um, I did want to chat about your work with the Boys and Girls uh, Club in the Twin Cities. Um, how did you get involved with Boys and Girls Club? And, you know, maybe what is it about that organization that that sort of called to you to to be involved and invest some of your time yeah so when i was uh i think way back in like middle school uh you know i used to go hoop at uh the boys and girls club in uh, north minneapolis um and then i think my senior year of high school right before i went off for college uh me and uh somebody that i'm close with uh you know we did like a, cl a clothing drive type deal uh, for winter clothes as well as you know some athletic clothes um, and you know athletic gear uh, and I actually uh, went back to that boys and girls club and donated a lot of the athletic gear uh, to that club uh, and, you know it's changed a lot you know the Timberwolves shout out to them they remodeled their whole gym uh, you know it looks pretty nice um, and you know that definitely inspired me a little bit uh, you know, because that gym's definitely uh, helping a lot of kids have opportunity to play different sports and, you know, be active. And, uh, you know, I felt like, uh, you know, if I could give back to them as well and, you know, help even more kids, uh, you know, it'd be great. Amazing. Yeah, I love, you know, I think a lot of us either have experiences like directly with the local boys and girls club or at least know of people that have been impacted. Um, so I think I know myself how valuable it is when people want to even just invest time, um, but to be able to invest time and resources and yeah. also the items of care, you know, that people need. Um, that's really how you move the needle. So that's awesome to hear oh, that you've been able to do that for your hometown. Um, so speaking of Minneapolis, um, you know, how often do you get to go back to Minneapolis since leaving 
um, to play ball in, in Spokane? Um, you know, is it, do you get to go back? Yeah, not, not, not often like? enough. Not often yeah. enough. Yeah, since, since I uh, initially left for college, I think I've been back three times for a total of like two weeks. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going back uh, in a few days for a few days, uh, you know, that's all I get here and there is a few days, but yeah, it's great to be able to go back and, uh, you know, see all the people who I've been close with uh, for a long time and, you know, check in on them, see how they're doing, uh, you know, yeah. Nice. Busy schedules um, make, it really tough to, make it tough to really go anywhere where you're not Most required definitely. to be, so I understand that for sure. Um, so, you know, we're talking about Minneapolis, um, you know, one of the big focuses of community, community voices for our organization has really been to, to have some tough conversations about things that matter and, and to have those conversations with people that are, that really have a stake in specific communities. And, you know, when we think about Minneapolis and, and that being the hub and, and really kind of a focal point of the, the arguments and conversations around social justice, you know, following the death of George Floyd. Um, of course, you've not been back as a lot since you left for school, but how have you maybe seen your hometown change um, in the years following that that major tragedy? And 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 what yeah. does that mean to you when you when you think about a place you grow up really changing so much as people are watching, you know, every day on the news? Yeah, um, you know, it's been great to see uh, how much the communities come together. Obviously. Uh, you know, at the time of, of uh, the George Floyd, um, at the time of that, you know, whole ordeal, uh, you know, there was a lot of divide uh, in the community, you know, from all different directions. There was a lot going on. But since then, you know, the community's come together in a lot of great ways. Uh, you know, obviously, I haven't been there firsthand to see it uh, this year. But uh, the year before that, I saw a lot of it. And I'm sure I'll see it when I go back in a couple of days. Um, and, you know, obviously it's something that, you know, should have never happened, you know, still, you know, pondering like, you know, why or how it could happen. But, uh, you know, I feel like, um, you know, it's definitely brought a lot of people together in the long run. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and you're right. You know, I think we all have spent the last several years pondering and, and as we're pondering, there's also been a lot of action taken in the terms of, of protesting and marching. Um, you know, sometimes you don't know what to say, but being with the community so it sort of helps get through those things. And, and Chet, you were among some of those who marched um, against, you know, police brutality and in, in honor of social justice. So how important is it to you, you know, the, the idea of allyship and especially positive allyship to those affected by racial injustices? And, if you were speaking to people, you know, what are some ways that you think people can help further the cause uh, from the point of view of an ally? Yeah, um, personally, I just think, uh, you know, injustice and, in, you know, all ways is wrong. And, you know, it's something that everybody should stand up for, uh, stand, or I mean, stand up against. Um, and, you know, like I said before, you know, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. Uh, and I feel like I did that, uh, you know, throughout my past, not only, you know, when I went out to, you know, be side by side with other people who, who are standing, standing up against the same thing, um, you know, and I feel like it's, it's something that has to continue. Uh, you know, it's not something we can just, you know, do one day and expect it to go away. Uh, you know, the world's not perfect. And, uh, you know, I don't think it'll be perfect anytime soon or ever. So, you know, we just got to keep, uh, keep, uh, keep working to, to make it better. Uh, day by day and eventually you know the days add up and uh, small changes each day make big change so yeah absolutely amen to that I echo those those same sentiments very very strongly um, well Chet thank you again obviously for chatting with us um, don't want to end on on too heavy of a note so want to um, of course you know reiterate some of the the, the feelings you expressed obviously about your community in relation to social justice and um, and for and obviously you speak spoke a little bit about your commitment to the boys and girls club. Um, we as an organization are are heavily involved with our boys and club boys and girls club as well. Um, so in addition to you know having an opportunity to speak to you here, 
We also want to be able to provide you with an opportunity to give back to your local boys and girls clubs. So um, JD Sports will be donating $20,000 um, that you'll be able to donate directly to the Twin Cities Boys and Girls Club. Um, so that's a gift from us through them to you. Um, Man, it's not a gift to me. It's a gift to you yeah, know, yeah. that Boys and Girls Club and all the little kids is helping out. Kids. Because, yeah, I mean, that means a lot to to me man that's crazy yeah yeah absolutely you know we we see the work that you do and um obviously want to be a part of seeing that work continue um so obviously a little bit goes a long way but a small gesture from us um hopefully the yeah, that's boys are much bigger of a gesture than yeah. than you guys could imagine awesome well i appreciate that thank you yeah of from, course from so, them from me you know thank you yeah, of course. We always, you know, want to help and um, we see you doing that. So we're just, we're really just following your lead, honestly. Awesome. Well, let's keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chet, uh, thank you again um, for, for joining us for one of these episodes of Community Voices. Um, we appreciate the work you've been doing um, on and off the court, obviously. Um, we as a company and an organization wish you all of the best um, as you prepare for a most momentous occasion. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of people, us included, who look forward to seeing you on the court um, as, a, as a new NBA um, all-star. So um, thank you again. We appreciate your time. And um, to those of you watching until next time, um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you.